Hi guys. Paul. And Mike. Maniacs Meat Podcast, Fresh Meat, Volume 3. Here we go. This Volume is three. Don't Go Near the Park from 1979 with Linnea Quigley. Not her first film. That was Psychos in Texas in, in uh, 75, but this is the fourth one. Now, this is precluded to be on the uh, back here, uh, one of the 39 films banned by the UK court as deprived, a true video nasty. Uh, I mean, I can understand, like, there was some uh, uh, supposed atrocities of murder children, almost rape, <laughs> almost yeah, this, almost rape. that. Mm. I almost would say that it's the last place you'll ever see. There's a lot of things about this that makes it look like a crazy slasher, yeah, murder, like giallo, giallo like... crazy. Uh, it gives it this impression that this is a real raunchy film. Uh, I yeah. think it's almost like a... marketing. Yeah, because as soon as I, as soon as you brought the case over, I picked it up and I said, "Paul, this absolutely looks like a movie that you would pick." Yes, up. exactly. <laughs> like it just looks absolutely wonderful. So I naturally was picturing like it's going to be covered with blood and like lots of yeah, almost like stuff. a Ted Bundy yeah, going to town kind yeah. of deal. Well, this is weird. This film. Was not that. <laughs> no, it was not any of that. Uh, we well, first we looked at it. And we thought this is going to be a crazy, disgusting slasher. Yeah. Then we put it in. Then it with, with the trailer, the, the before, title the, screen. The title screen. It looked like it's a zombie flick. I'm like, oh, I'm still good with yeah, that. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And then it goes into this overly monologued back ten, twelve yeah, thousand years it ago. Packs so much in the first like five minutes of that movie. <laughs> yeah. If there's you are a, not paying attention, you're first, not going to have any idea what's going on. There's the first tribe of human beings that were living in harmony 10,000 years ago, but all wore, they weren't wearing skins. I, nothing looks right. And the two children of the, the, the great queen of the humans were uh, eating their own uh, siblings to stay young. Mm -hmm. And she curses them to an eternity of dying and they have to keep on eating humans to try to stay alive, to look young. To, to look young. To look have, young. It was like a weird zombie vampire With crossover. With ego crossover, yeah. And then they said 12,000 years in the future, if you see this one, if you... The moon be flanked by the two, two stars, stars of, of the wolf. wolf. And then if you have a daughter, like this, the one virgin girl can, you know... Break the curse. Break the curse and you can live immortally forever. Holy fuck. You know what I mean? Like well, that was, that was a lot to take in in the first five minutes. Yeah. It wasn't ten minutes in. I mean, it was oh, like twenty, almost was, ten minutes was, into the film. It was scrolling you... text, <laughs> scrolling text, and then like here's a bunch of here's the plot, go. Yeah, and it was real fast. There was no build up to anything. It was just. It literally was ten minutes into the film almost before you even saw the title screen of "Don't Go Near the Park." Yeah, it was it, it was a thrill ride. Now, however. It was a very in-depth concept for a film. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Watching the movie, the concept of the movie, I did enjoy. Yeah, I did like. I did like the the premise. I thought it was neat. Mm -hmm. I, I can't believe I'm about to say this. I think this movie would benefit well from a remake now. Yeah, with money, budget, time, actors, writers. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a the bit writing. Of a rewrite. <laughs> The writing was basically the writing horrible. Was I, Linnea, like I mean, Linnea's Quigley's breasts were pretty much the yeah. star of the show. Yeah. Well, as soon as you see that outline of her in the show, yeah, you're like, yeah, that's, that's her. her. There she is. She's she's hired to get naked. That's all yeah. she does. Um, and yell a bunch and of And then bitch. she was a, yeah, she was a real bitch in this later. Um, apparently, it had set direction by Robert A. Burns, which was really cool, which is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Roman Animator. Um, sometimes people like artists go into phases like their blue phase or yeah. their, you know, their, their human corpse Gosh. phase or whatever. He was in this film, he was in his straw phase. Eh. Mm -hmm. The straw phase. There was straw everywhere. Straw in this everywhere. Every time anything looked dilapidated, they just cover it with straw. Just put straw in Straw everywhere. Make it look old. What would we do? Straw. Just throw a bunch of straw. Straw. Around. Straw. No cobwebs. We don't need to go to the time to make different, yeah. like, it, no. it, Articulate just, things out of bones and all no, this stuff just like throw it's straw. A, straw. It's fine. He was in his straw it's phase. Fine. Um, this was a hard watch. I, I yeah, you know, it, it's eighty four <laughs> minutes long, and I think it's either sometimes I feel it's eighty four minutes too long, and then sometimes I think it's lo not long enough because of what they're trying to do. I, yeah, so I feel like there was a they could have <laughs> the movie would have benefited a lot from um, time lapses that were. 
either cut out or never filmed or I, I don't know what the editing process was for this but it was not smart i i think, I, I think if it was cohesive um, it would be better because sometimes yeah. like there there like we were saying like it's either on or off yeah the well, emotions are either yeah peaked I, or off i mean there's a, there's a scene he rents a room from elena quickly and um the the cannibalistic brother guy yeah. rents the room and then she finds out she kind of figures out who he is and then he catches her and stares at her for about a minute with yeah, the film time just, and then it cuts to them getting married she, she and then starts, it cuts she <laughs> she she stops screaming she slowly gets up she starts undressing which we're like yay the money shot yes. this is what i want to see mm -hmm. but halfway up before things start getting revealed it literally cuts to a wedding yeah it's her wedding and then it literally right after the wedding cuts to a pregnancy cuts to her birth the, the little girl's birth yeah and then and like and and, and then it just there's like a five to ten minute segment of the film where it's just cut scenes of just time just yeah. flying by and it's very the premise is too <laughs> every t every year they will age ten so they have to keep consuming to stay that youth yeah the, the sister because there's a brother and a sister kills a person yeah she gets young again. Within the next year, she's already back to looking like a haggard yeah, old lady. She's at the wedding. Yeah, and it doesn't make any sense. Unless the wedding was ten years, like several years, years in the future, yeah. she just decided not to kill anybody just, to look and, young. And he must have been killing people left and right, but we never, never see an inkling of any of yeah. that whatsoever. No one questions for the fact that the dad never ages the whole time. Yeah, it's uh, so things go on like this. He is very protective of the girl because he's going to use her later to become immortal mm -hmm. by, I don't know. By sacrificing, sacrificing her or something. something. For the, Pretty creepy. To complete the ritual and break the curse. But anyway, he was like, you know, that typical overly loving father, but in a good way. Yeah. But, you know, he has bad intentions. Mm -hmm. you know? So, anyway, Linnea Quigley is the mom. She gets so pissed off that she's not getting attention from the dad. At her 16th birthday, she literally says, either throw her out or I'm leaving. Yeah, and he says, I'm leaving. Well, no, and then screw he, it, I'm leaving. Yeah, and then he's gone until the end of the movie. Until, yeah, you never see him again at the end of the movie. And what a dick to do that on the 18th, yeah. 16th birthday. Yeah, that, 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 that's going to move. That's going to cut yeah. some stars. Yeah, emotional stars. So yeah, you're not gonna the girl ends up running away, too. She ends up getting kidnapped in a rape van and almost basically raped her to, to yeah. get hanging with out. The, with the, with one of my favorite things about that was the fact that the whole van had shag carpeting over everything. everything. The yes. dash yeah. and the whole van. Well, I guess my ex wife Because, dad, you know, it's the late 80s well, at that yeah. point, presumably. Well, yeah, it was supposed to be it was 79, but like <laughs> apparently my ex-wife's dad did have a van that was full of shag carpeting as well, which, there you go, shag puss. Um, but, so, before, the dad gives her this talisman, I guess, and it was yeah, about, that big yeah, about, about something like that, about the size of a gopher nut. Uh, and it glows, makes the car do crazy things. She, the car explodes, but she's fine because the magic of the talisman. Yeah, Apparently, like, like they have like magical powers too, yeah, which they didn't, didn't really even, get a whole lot into. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I think this would be like an amazing Italian. Like if the, if the Italians made this film, it would be absolutely bitch justly crazy. Uh, but unfortunately, it was Americans. But. So then you, you get moving through the film. She ends up finding the sister. Mm -hmm. The sister ends up wanting to protect her later. Yeah. Because the sister's goal is to break the curse. Break and the curse. be immortal. That yeah. is the sister's goal. She knows that Bondi, the main character, is the daughter of the, the brother. And that that's what they need to break the curse. So she her goal is to, I need to keep her safe until... Yeah. The stars are right, right, if you will. The uh, HP Lovecraft. Yeah, uh, exactly. to complete the ritual and break the curse in some Cthulhu. Yeah, Not I. Last uh, part, but. We did get a kick out of the one character. This is this guy named Seth. It's a little boy, ran away from his mom. Fuck you, mom. Because they all come to this little El Rancho place. So there's yeah. a, like a a wayward the, house. The the park. The park. And don't go near the park. Well, there's no park in the whole. No, thing. I, I think the whole premise was that the El Rancho, the rancho was on state land yeah which was a state park yes but it was cursed so people said don't go near the park. don't go near the park but it was very not well yeah this is probably not the greatest the title movie. for this film no, it's a terrible title he uh the boy who played a matt in in amityville horror is uh is a 
Menyo Peloshi. I can't remember his yeah. name. Uh, yeah. But it was the Matt from uh, Amityville Horror. He has the best lines in the film. Yeah. He automatically comes in and sees this girl. <laughs> this was the best part of the movie. It to was be the best part of the movie because it was just ridiculous. It was just so. I, I just he sat down next to this girl that was disheveled. She put I, herself together. She was sleeping, sleep and couch. I made a joke. What? Well, now you're gonna feel her up, right? And then he starts trying to feel her up, and then she wakes up, and his line is the best. He goes, "I'm sorry, I didn't know you were alive." Yeah, I didn't realize you were alive. The best. That kid is going to be a problem in about fifteen yeah, years. I was gonna say, and then, uh, and then, um, then she says, "Well, because basically he goes, well, can I? Can you be my sister at least? Because like he doesn't have yeah. anybody." And she goes, "Well, brothers don't feel up their sisters when they're sleeping." And then he, and then he says, "Well, what about when they're awake?" Yeah, like, like this, this kid, kid is this motherfucker. Right here yeah, has got some issues. It is pretty entertaining. <laughs> Um, biddly Not bobbly okay. boom, you get some back and forth that some, I guess, other incohesive cuts. Yeah, like just he went for a burger, the next thing you know, he's like, in a cave. Yeah, like he's like, he's with them at the rancho, and then he's with them at, or then he's by himself selling flowers. City, selling flowers. And then a scene that would, in movie timelines would presumably be happening at the same time <coughs> he seems to be there with them again and it's just this back and forth and it's really not okay no it really <laughs> was not, not okay. okay the gore scenes were actually pretty good some of the effects were really enjoyable when sometimes not the first not stomach the, not the first open. one when the first when the man does it but yeah. when the ladies ripping up open people's stomachs yeah. to feed on their entrails to, to basically sustain her life yeah. like she literally just like Pops that one girl's stomach over it, and it literally looks like her stomach actually just popped yeah, the fuck open. It was uh, actually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, because they 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 do it all right from the stomach, and then like drink the blood and eat the guts. The visceral, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, not not the very first one of those because that was obviously the girl big, that but, got caught in the trap. But the, the trap and the one towards the uh, the, the, the camper, end, the one towards the end when she's she there's a girl by a campfire, campfire. that she comes across. <laughs> yeah, and does it too. Looked phenomenal. They actually um, did. Pretty, it did. Pretty good. It, because, you know, you expect to see, like, the stationary body with, like, the full... With the plastic. With the, yeah, with, with the, the prosthetic. Yeah, with the, yeah. Like, the, and, like, the moving, but... It, like, it just it, looked she like was, her she body... She was moving the entire the time. came out. Yeah, like, she was moving the entire time and grabbed and pulled and, like, pulled it open. And I was like, whoa. I yeah. was... Like, it wasn't excessively gory or anything. I just didn't expect to see an effect that well... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, implemented that, like that. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, you did a really good job. Yeah, it, it, executing that that maneuver. It really surprised me. Really surprised yeah, me. no, that, I mean, it has some good spots and some bad spots. It wasn't worth the twenty bucks I paid for it. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. You know what? This reminds me of if I were watching Mystery Science Theater three thousand. It'd be a good one. And they were like, "Tonight, don't go near the park." Yes. Yes. This like I was good. like, this is perfect for Mystery Science Theater. Yes, I think that would be good. right. Runtime about eighty, just a shy of an hour and a half. Yeah. Give you some time to do that in between cuts with Crow and yeah. Tom Servo and no, 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 you, you're right. And uh, I, I just and with the the pacing of the movie and everything, mm -hmm. I was like, that's a that's a Mystery Science Theater movie. That's what that is. So wrapping up the the film. <clears throat> The time is right. The moon and the stars are aligned. <laughs> the girl has a random dream that he said he seems like a French noir film. Yeah, yeah. There's that, that that scene. I was like, I feel like I'm watching a French art film. Yeah, exactly. Right now. <laughs> she blatantly wakes up and runs in the middle of nowhere. Falls into a cave that wasn't Lots there. Also, like yeah, screaming, running, <clears throat> and, like weird mind white mind lasers. The, the dad like... is there, telling her to get naked. Commanding the beast, the dog yeah. there to rip all her clothes off. Starlight, presumably the dog from the beginning named Starlight, Starlight which managed that, to make it seventeen so, years. Yeah, I don't know. And then, <laughs> then the the woman, the sister shows up, beating the crap out of the guy because he's like, "No, don't do this. Don't yeah, do this." She was going, he was going to rape his daughter. Yeah, and she was like, "Why would you do that? We needed to be a virgin to complete the ritual." Yeah, and just it just. The writing was not very good, I don't no. think. No. I think that was the And issue. then the weirdest not line the near the, the end writer. is because for some reason all their victims are just scattered around the place too. Even like, you know, you think you'd burn them or bury them or do something yeah, like that's that. All They're in just that scattered cave. right there in the yeah. cave. Um, <clears throat> they, during the fight, 
they start the guy starts doing eye lasers, random eye lasers. Yeah. Which how the hell? And, and then, then the, the woman summons one, fire. She summons fire. She summons fire from everything. <sighs> Randomly, then, as the sister is writhing in agony because he got she got shot in the eye with an eye laser, she says, "The pendant, swallow it." Yeah, the to, thing to that's this... about that big around. Yeah, and she just goes, like a little pill. Yeah, I was like, "That's bullshit." Yeah, no, this thing was like <laughs> this. Not gonna happen like that. Yeah, and then she turns into the mother from the beginning and curses everybody and makes the dead come back to life and kill them. Yeah. And then returns back to the woman. They all escape because of Taft that just runs in. Yeah, Taft is a guy that the young boy Seth. They had a burger. Nick, they, yeah, the kind of uh, creepy uh, John Wayne befri- Gacy befriended, vibe. Yeah, I will say the uh, the brother in this, if you watch it, is very reminiscent of Ted Bundy. Very Ted Bundy. <laughs> very Ted Bundy. Absolutely Ted Bundy-ish. Ted Bundy-ish. <laughs> and then all of a sudden the zombies come up, eat the eat the siblings. They run out of the cave. The cave goes there. They wander around, and the film is starting to end because they're like, "Oh, what are we do? What are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do now?" And they just start playing in a playground. Yeah, they're playing in a park. shirtless, except for the girl, and then the little boy, oh, Seth, Seth or Nick, whatever yeah. name Nick. you want. To, yeah, it was Nick. It was Nick, but his mom was yelling Seth, Seth at him, and he apparently oh changed, no, because he, he gave himself he changed, that he name. He changed his yeah. name to Nick because he um, wanted to. Makes it very confusing. Yes, more confusing this. But Nick gets up onto because they she the, the the brother and sister rip open the guts and then eat it, right? So Nick gets up onto the Seth Nick gets Seth up Nick, yeah. to the the slide and she's holding him there. And the next thing you know, her fingers go into his gut and there's blood and Nick goes, Ah and she ah. smiles at the camera and, and it's freeze ended. frame. Freeze frame. Credits. Credits. <laughs> like you know there's ten fucking people like, here, right? Yeah, like, like, there's, there's other there's people. All, all over the place. There's people all over the place. You can't just gut open a little yeah. boy on the top of a ladder and expect to get away with it. it I mean, something. have you never played Among Us? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was, it was, you're going to get kicked out of the shuttle. <laughs> like, it, it, was, was, it was It was. something. It, it was, was something else. Um, I don't know what to say about this. I think we talked pretty much as much as we could talk about this film. Yeah, I'm, I will say the... Um, the film quality was very good. The, the, the film quality, I thought, was going to be... Piss poor. It was actually really well done. Real, real good. Real, real clean. crisp, clean. They put money into this film. I've never heard about this film before. The only thing I thought was odd was, and I know I brought it up to you, was I don't know how you could have watched this movie when it came out because watching it on even like a like a good TV, mm-hmm. it, everything was so dark at that end, uh, during the end, yeah. that if you're watching it, it on a picture black. tube or, yeah, or like in theaters... Unless they really adjusted stuff like crazy in a theater, and you can't do it really mm-hmm. on your picture tube, you wouldn't have been able to see yeah. anything. The night and times, the rest would have been washed the out. The nighttime scenes were very, 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 very dark, but all the other scenes were really nice. Yeah, like, yeah, the, but the, yeah, the actual film quality was on so, point. Give me a rating. I want a horror rating and an overall and a non-horror rating. Four for everybody. Four for everybody. Four right around. Four, the- four around the board because everybody's uh, a horror fan. Uh, I, I feel like a horror fan and a non-horror fan are going to feel the same way about this movie. Mm-hmm. It's silly. <laughs> it's there ridiculous. I would say a five, five for a horror okay. fan and a one. Wow, one. All right. Yeah, I think a one for a regular fan. I, th- I think it all depends on uh, how much the regular person is willing to put up with the... Like, if they're like, I want to watch something that's terrible. Yeah, but that's the thing is that you know you're putting something terrible in. Yeah. I, I will say this. Uh, like, this isn't good You track. and I going into this, like, I was expecting a much different film. I was let down. So, I was let down. But I will say this. I could see how somebody that already kind of has a feel for what this movie actually is, was like, I feel like watching, like, a really shitty, like, kind of B-horror film or, like, something like that. Mm-hmm. Something that they know they can make fun of and something crappy, like Mystery Science Theater yeah. style. They're like... I'm going to throw this in, yeah. and they're going to be happy with it. Yeah. I think, and we're going to add all of our scores together and just give you a gi- general overall then, I think a three. Three, yeah. That's three, out of, three out of ten. Yeah, overall. everybody, everybody. Um, hey, I, I own it. I own a little piece of Linnea Quigley's history, and if I, when I see her next year, hopefully, now if it doesn't get canceled again, I'm going to bring this. Yeah. I'm going to have her sign this bitch. So if you ever want to watch uh, Don't Go Near the Park, just get a hold of Paul. 
And I'll just I don't lend it out to you I'll just because to you. You he's not too worried about not getting it back, oh, I don't like, think. Yeah, it's going to be a horrible thing. But I am definitely going to have Linnea Quigley sign the shit out of this. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that's good at least. Well, here we go. This has been Paul. And Mike. Fresh Meat, Maniacs Meat Podcast, Episode 3, or, or Volume 3, probably Episode 62, but they don't, 63, I mean, we're getting up there. Yeah, with an Arrogansit. With an Arrogansit. Crush it like Quinn. Crush it like Quinn. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.